This is it, folks. The Mark of the Beast is here. The government's finally putting the Mark of the Beast on your quadcopter. It's going to make you broadcast your information and turn your freaking quadcopters gay. I'm Joshua Bardwell. <laughs> I'm Joshua Bardwell. You're going to learn something today. <laughs> okay, well, <laughs> uh, my... My Alex Jones impression, notwithstanding. Tell me in the comments if you think that was a good Alex Jones impression. My Alex Jones impression, notwithstanding. This is a very controversial little device. And it is a controversial device because it is a remote ID module. And the reason that's controversial is because many people reject the very idea of putting a remote ID module on their aircraft. Now, surely you're not watching this video and going, what even is remote ID? I have no idea. But if you are, if you don't feel fully versed in what remote ID is and what it requires of you, I'm not going to go into that now because I went into it in another video. It's linked in the video description below. You should pause this video. You should go watch that video and then go, huh, well, that's pretty ridiculous. Or, huh, that doesn't sound so bad. I don't know. You should watch that video, form an opinion, and then come back here and watch this video. So that's why this device is controversial, because many people just reject the idea of participating in remote ID whatsoever. And if you're one of those people, then you don't care about this device because it's like, you don't care. You're not going to do it. You're not going to spend the amount of money that this costs to put one of these devices on your quadcopter. You're just going to fly. You're not going to be compliant. You're going to assume that you're probably never going to get in trouble and you're probably going to be right about that. But there are a lot of people out there who don't feel like they can do that. And for those people, this is important because this is, at the time that I'm making this video, the best and least intrusive option for complying with remote ID that I'm aware of. As you can see from the logo right here, this module is manufactured by Flight Test, and it is in fact manufactured by Flight Test. It is not just sort of they slapped their logo on it and they bought it from somebody else. Flight Test and the FPV Freedom Coalition worked together to design the specs for this to come up with the requirements and then contracted with a manufacturer in the United States. This is made in the United States, which if that's something you care about, then you're really going to value that. Um, or they work together to come up with this design, to have it manufactured, and to sell it. And if anybody has the interests and perspective of FPV hobbyists at heart, surely it's flight test. So it's kind of ironic. Uh, the FT Easy ID, we put a lot of passion, a lot of hard work. And I say we for a reason. Um, this is between FPV Freedom Coalition, Flight Test, FTCA, and my good friend Tanner Ewing, who um, owns and runs uh, Tritium Studios or Tritium Electronics. I don't think remote ID is beneficial for the hobby, and I don't believe it actually makes the skies a safer place. Um, I firmly believe that free is where people can basically establish a flying site where people can come and fly without the burden of electronics is the best way to go to give people a pathway to compliance. We have a great safety record of many, many, many years of safe operation, and frankly, bad people are going to do bad things without following the law. But if we're going to have this technology with GPS and Bluetooth, Let's make it made in America. Let's make it as economical as possible. And let's also pack it full of tons of extra features that people really can benefit from, like find my plane, the GPS pass-through, voltage range, that means you can plug it into your receiver, all the way up to 8S, so it's like 5.5 to 8S, and uh, many other features to come to really help it grow the hobby and then bring that value back to the people that are choosing to be compliant. Um, it's everybody's right to choose to comply or not to comply. I firmly believe that myself. Um, but when we're going into schools, when we're going into places where people have to comply, like a local park, and they're checking for these things, we want to give people options so they can still enjoy and grow the hobby. So what does this little device actually do? What it does is actually super, super simple. We've got a GPS receiver here. It is a U-Blox M8 series GPS receiver. It's got a built-in GPS antenna and it receives the GPS position of the aircraft. Then down here, we've got a little microprocessor and it takes that information from the GPS and it transmits that information out a Bluetooth and Wi-Fi antenna. And the device has an integrated Bluetooth and Wi-Fi antenna. I think it's this little component right here. And the specific format of those messages is what makes it compliant with remote ID. So what makes this module so special? I mean, I'd buy it just based on the fact that it's made by the folks at Flight Test who have supported and been members of the FPV community for years and years and years. But that's not the only reason to buy it. Uh, it is one of the lightest, if not the lightest, 
remote ID modules out there. It weighs just about 10 grams. That means it is going to be possible to install it on a wide variety of aircraft. Like, well, <laughs> you don't have to put a remote ID module on a tiny whoop because it's under 250 grams. Aircraft under 250 grams are exempt, but a 10 gram module on a 30 or 40 gram whoop, not a good idea, but like, theoretically you could do it. And by the time you're up to something like a two inch or a three inch, the extra 10 grams of this module, if you were to do it, uh, are gonna be relatively negligible. The other thing that makes this stand out is that it has completely integrated antennas. There have been other remote ID modules, which I've seen starting to be sold, and they have antenna plugs for external antennas. And no one wants to be mounting external antennas all over their aircraft. In fact, most people, but, but don't external antennas give you the best possible range? Yes, they do. And so wouldn't it be nice to have an integrated antenna which doesn't have as good a range and doesn't broadcast your location as widely? Well, you may not feel that way, but it certainly did occur to me. The internal antenna is going to make this much easier to mount. It has 20 millimeter sized mounting holes so it can mount in the rear of most popular frames. Uh, the GPS may struggle to get a lock if it's inside the frame. You could also certainly mount it out the back of the frame, similar to how many GPS receivers are mounted. There's various ways you could decide to mount it. The other thing that Flight Test and the FPV Freedom Coalition have done is made it as easy as possible to get this device going. So when you buy this device, it will come with a serial number. I'm covering this up because I don't want you guys to have the serial number of my device. And you will take that serial number and when you register your drone with the FAA, you will tell the FAA page, yes, this drone has remote ID, yes, it has a broadcast module, and you will type that number in. And that's how the FAA will know when you fly this over a nuclear power plant and the nuclear power plant picks up your remote ID number, that's how they'll come find out who you are and come yell at you. At least that's how they imagine it being. The process of registering the serial number, associating the serial number with the bro broadcast module and so forth has been made as simple as possible. That's all done for you. And when it comes in the mail, it simply has the serial number all ready to go. All you have to do is install this on your aircraft, provide it with power, and it can be powered from anything up to, can it go down? It goes up to 8S. Does it go down to 1S? Hold on. No, it's 2S to 8S. So if you have a 1S, well, if you have a 1S, it's probably under 250 grams and you don't need remote ID. Anyway, 2S up to 8S takes direct battery voltage, powers up, and it immediately is good to go, and you are compliant with the rules. Isn't that nice? You can also use this as your GPS. So if you have a quadcopter with GPS already on it, this can substitute out. It has pads to wire to the UART on your flight controller, and it can also provide GPS coordinates to your flight controller, so you can do things like return to home. Now, there are some questions that people probably are wondering at this point that are based on a, a, like a misunderstanding of what remote ID is. For example, I know there are people out there who are wondering, if I put this on my quadcopter and, like, it can't get a GPS lock, is it going to prevent me from taking off? No. It, this, that is not how remote ID works. If you have a device with standard remote ID, like a DJI drone that has remote ID baked in from the factory, it can prevent you from taking off if it doesn't have GPS lock and doesn't, isn't able to do the things it thinks you need to do. This remote ID module is exclusively for self-built drones and Essentially, there's, there's no way that they can tell your flight controller not to take off. It doesn't, the beta flight devs wouldn't let them do that and haven't let them do that and aren't required to let them do that. So if you add this to your aircraft, you, you don't have to wire it to your flight controller at all. You can simply give it power, stick it on the aircraft, and boom, now you're compliant. But if you do decide to wire it to your flight controller, it will provide GPS coordinates to your flight controller like any other GPS unit. It will also act as a remote ID broadcast device, and that is it. You're not getting any uh, location lockouts, any, anything like that. It won't interfere at all with you flying your aircraft. Now, the FAA says that if this device isn't working, you're not allowed to take off. But that's entirely on you to comply with, or not. That's up to you. It's a little silly for me to be winking at you, because frankly, if you're not going to comply, you're not going to spend $109 on this damn thing. Hey there, folks. It's Joshua from the future. Since I've recorded this, the price has been reduced from $109 to 
to $99. I'm not going to edit out every time in the video I say $109. Just know that the current price at the time of this recording is $100, $99.99. That may go up or down in the future, but at least for now, that is considered to be a permanent price change, not just a promotion. That $109 price is going to really stick in a lot of people's craw. Uh, you can technically move a remote ID module between your aircraft. So technically you only need one of them, but uh, a lot of people wouldn't want to do that and would find that onerous. And $109 for each of your aircraft is, well, a lot of people's aircraft don't cost that much. Sadly, this is just about as low a price. Uh, I mean, like I, I pushed them on this and I said, really? And they said that if you add up the cost of the materials and the cost of the manufacturing, and bear in mind, this is being manufactured in the United States, not on some assembly line in China. And then this is also being sold through normal retail stores like GetFPV and so forth. So uh, you take uh, the manufacturing costs and you take a reasonable profit margin. And that's just how much something like this costs in today's world. Well, I don't think we could possibly finish this video without powering this sucker up, taking it outside and seeing how it works. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so here's the deal. I've got a four cell lithium ion battery. I've got it plugged into a smoke stopper here uh, just for safety. And I've got that wired directly to the flight test remote ID unit. I'm gonna go ahead and power it on. And when I first power it on, we'll get a red LED here indicating it does not have GPS lock yet. After some time, that will go green, indicating it has GPS lock. And when that says green, then according to the FAA, you're good to go. Oh, cool, it started raining right when I'm about to start walking around outside. <laughs> that didn't take long at all. Green, good to go. Now that broadcast is gonna be picked up by any Remote ID capable app. So here is the app Drone Scanner, and it's available from your, your local app store. And it's picking up, it's picking up two drones. But the ID for both of them is the same. Why are they showing, why is this one module showing up as two different drones? Oh, I see. One is Bluetooth 4 and one is Bluetooth 5. So this device broadcasts both, both Bluetooth 4 and Bluetooth 5. Bluetooth 5 has longer range, but some phones don't support it. Uh, and it's showing up as two different apps. Okay, well, that's fine. Um, now, there's actually an advantage of having the flight test module though, which is that Flight Test has a custom app. Actually, they've had an app for their customers for a long time, and they've added Remote ID capability to the Flight Test app. So if I open up that Flight Test app, I can go to my hangar. Uh, once you buy the module, there comes a little QR code that registers the module to your Flight Test account. And if I go to Remote ID and then find my plane, it will show in real time the location of the aircraft. And this is kind of nice. The idea, I guess, is that you will run this uh, while you're flying. And if you crash and lose your plane, it'll show you on a map exactly where you went down. It says it's about 47 feet away, which doesn't seem right, though. That's not right at all. It's, it's clearly right beside me, not out in my yard. Well, the location doesn't seem to be as precise as it might be. It's reading it like 30 feet away from where it actually is. Let's go outside. Let's take it out and let's walk it around a little bit and see what happens. I'm just going to leave the phone right here. I wonder how far away we can get before the... Oh, crud. Well, I just lost power. So that XT30 wasn't very powerful. Impressive. There are so many broken trees from this, th from this tornado that came through. It's insane. There are so many broken trees. It just tore the shit out of these trees. There we go, we're green again, and we are broadcasting. And we'll see, I mean, I'll just have to look at the playback to see, like, what we end up with in terms of is it currently picking up the signal or has it gone out of range? Remember, this is just being broadcast. There's no sort of uplink to the cloud or anything like that. There's no 5G. Essentially, whenever I go out of range, Whenever I go out of range, a Bluetooth range, then it just, that's it. I can't be detected anymore. Uh, now I know some people say, well, Bluetooth only has a range of 30 meters or something. Well, that's if you're doing like audio with a Bluetooth headset. If you're doing this, it can have much greater range because it is a much lower bitrate signal. 
The flight test says they have accomplished in open air a range of about 1,500 feet or meters. Well, that's a big difference. I think it must have been feet, but I don't know. I don't remember. Let's just finish this uh, little traipse around my yard while I get rained on. And we'll go back and we'll take a look and see, you know, what, uh, what the app picked up. Mm, grass is looking good. Grass is looking good. I recently switched to cutting at a higher height, cutting at about three or three and a half inches. Oh my God, it's raining so hard. I gotta go. Uh, <laughs> no connection. Tony doesn't do historical logging. No, it's not, it's not logging anything at all. Just sitting there. Weird. Oh, there we go. No, no, it's moving. It's moving extremely slowly. Oh, it caught up. It caught up. It says nearby. It's just this blue one that's not really it's just sitting there. It doesn't seem to show a, like a historical track. That would be nice. Certainly they could do that. Although given how accurate the location is, it doesn't seem like that would be very useful. Like it's showing 38 feet away and it's sort of all over the place. Uh, yeah. For anybody who's concerned about the privacy implications of showing where your drone is, good news. <laughs> the precision is terrible. <laughs> it's, showing, it's like literally right here. It's right here. It's just sitting there with a clear view of the sky, mostly clear view of the sky. Well, okay, not quite clear, but pretty clear. It's all over the freaking place, 60 feet away. Yeah, no. Well, there we go, folks. This is the flight test remote ID module. And I feel a little bit chagrined to say that we have come to a situation where for some of us, those of us who either choose to comply or feel like we do not have the option to risk not complying, for those people, this is the best option. It is small, it's lightweight, it doesn't consume very much power, and it is completely self-contained, and it is as inexpensive as I think this kind of thing is gonna freaking get, even though it's pretty freaking expensive. If I was gonna put remote ID on my aircraft, this is the module I would choose. And I know there's other modules that are in the works that will have similar functionality to this. But at the time that I'm making this, I think this is the only one that ticks all these boxes. There are other modules that are similar in size, but they have external antennas and so on and so on and so on. That will change in the future. And when that happens, I'll make videos about those modules. But for the time being, if you wanna comply with remote ID, sorry to say, this is probably the best option. And there are links in the video description for where you can pick it up. And there's a comment section for all the people who don't intend to comply to talk about how mad they are that this even exists, but that's fine too. If you don't know what the hell all this fuss is about, I'm gonna put a card on screen to that video I mentioned earlier that goes deeper into depth about remote ID, what it is and what I think we should do about it. And I'm gonna also put a card on screen to that remote ID spoofer that probably isn't legal to use, but hey, you do you. Links in the video description as well if you can't see the cards. See you there.